Anyway, I'm the person who wrote. Actually, uh, human rights. Uh, I'm just saying, it's a common problem. Okay, everybody concerned is those people, those animals who stands on two legs. Uh, usually, they get human rights uh, in lifetime. Once again. Whether they are silent or is obvious, yeah, over to the kinsa, not the kinematre, or some of the human rights and so on. So, you know, that's a very good saying, having a, a scientific, uh, scientific background on that. Uh, I'll, I'll come to that point later on. So, it's a very common problem uh, that uh, a physician or surgeons they will come across, even gynecologist, you know. So uh, it's it's wise enough to know understand this problem uh, properly and basic thing about the hemorrhoids. Okay. Um, uh, we used to have uh, previously there was no any such uh, conception of anal cushion. Anal cushion when I came when I have a Boston seat on Sunday, tell a cushion on Sunday. So there is a cushion in the anal area uh, just below the rectum, somewhere in the area of uh, dented line, in the wall of the anorectal junction. So what is this cushion after all? We have a cushion like you, a spons, a spons, a tacky, a different shape, and that gives and they take the weight of your body when you sit down. So that's a cushion. So what is this cushion? Any cushion is it? It's actually an aggregation of artery and veins. Since the wall of the uh, rectal uh, anal junction, the wall of the rectal anal junction, there are some muscles and some connective tissues. Especially, if you remember the anatomy of uh, anal rectal junction, my anal rectal junction, there are anterior and posterior rectal artery, which divides into two. Posterior is 11 o'clock, and anterior is 3 and 7 o'clock. Actually, two arteries. So these arteries run in the wall of the rectum as well as in anus. So this is a conglomeration or the, the, the making a flat uh, surface where the, all the pressure of Enrolled rejection increases, yeah, lies on. Yeah, this I have only thing heat goes, okay. Pressure will have only thing heat goes in cushion. Man. And they should be very strong. Okay. So this aggregation of artery and veins, smooth muscles, and elastic on the tissue in the substance at three, seven, eight o'clock positions of anal canal. Okay. So that's the cushion. But the cushion only the pressure for never, okay. The whole thing is that. Okay. Only Hemorrhoids, when I came, when I, there is a very common disease. Every, every person, every animal who is standing on two legs, they used to have. But in the name of the Greek mother, it's an old disease, a blood cluster, rice, blood cluster, rice, 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 bleeding. Hema means blood, the human, hema, hemorrhoids, like this, really, it was a thorough, just say, let him piles, 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 when I think something coming out. Masters to any other Nepal means Harsha once again. Usually Harsha when you go say, Rogat I go Harsha when it's all on so you know. A move got up in a calculated dinge by it is where I have dental carries where I have to say Harsha once on. They say, this is what I have on Harsha once. Okay, that's a very common word that usually used by our native people or old people. Harsha boy, Harsha boy, what I have to say, you know. So that is known as Bleeding, bleeding from retina, the horse one. So, okay. If you see this anatomy, you see our, this is your rectum and comes to the endorectal junction, your dented lines are. The your area, the rectum, so they get narrowed down. When you get pressure, pressure, you get the inner wall. Pressure burn above. Okay. Pressure burn with Suppose anal tone is increased. Let him disarrogate as so. Let him let this allow you. Let him disarrogate as so. You pressure lay, yeah, heat goes. Okay. 
ओके ऑल अराउंड तीन चार ठाव में ओके गए पे यहाँ के क्वेश्चन दिस इज ऑल द भेसल्स एंड द मसल्स एंड एंड इलास्टिक टिश्यूज है जम इवन द मिकस मेम्ब्रेन अफ द रेक्टम रेक्टम एज एनल कैनल यहाँ जम क्वेश्चन हो दिस नोट एट क्वेश्चन यहाँ प्रेसर भाई के होता है यहाँ प्रेसर भाई के प्रेस करे इस तान तेल ताने पे के होता इट कम्स आउट दिस इज नर्मल क्वेश्चन ओके दिस इज नर्मल क्वेश्चन जहाँ कि भेसल्स मिकोस मेम्रोन छब मिकोजा मसल दिस इंटरनल इंटरनल इंस्पेक्टर दिस एक्सटर्नल लिबेटर एनआई हो यह सर्कुलर मसल बड़ आई रखा हाई सो दिस अल इंटर इंटरस्पेक्टर स्पेस भो है यह डेन्टेड लाइन भो यो एनल कैनल भो है सो दिस एरिया जो नर्मल हो यहाँ प्रेसर पड़े पे होता है ये ड्रैग आउट हो समथिंग लाइक एट अर्क थिरी प्रोडक्ट बनाने भाई सो दिस ड्रैग आउट प्रेसर पे ड्रैग कर सो दिस बिकम्स ह्यूमरवाइज ओके दिस इज इंटरनल ह्यूमरवाइज इन द लेवल अफ एनोरेक्टल जंक्शन्स ओके तर एनल में मत होता ओके इन द एनल रिजन देर मत देर माइट बी समटाइम्स क्वेश्चन देर दे माइट अल्सो प्रोडक्ट लाइक दिस ये एक्सटर्नल हेमरइड्स भो ये डेन्टल लाइन में धे तल आयो जस्ट इन द वर्ड्स अफ द एनल कैनल एनल ओपनिंग ये के होता है एनोरेक्टल जंक्शन में एनल कैनल को अपर पार्ट में भो यू कैन सी दिस सो दिस वन इज इंटरनल ह्यूमरइड्स दिस एक्सटर्नल ह्यूमरइड्स सो इफ यू रिमेम्बर दिस एनाटोमी यू यू अंडरस्टैंड द ह्यूमरइड्स ओके दिस किप इट इन माइंड ड्यूरिंग होल लेक्चर ओके आई एम नोट गोइंग डिटेल एज एज ए टोल यू हाई ये अब यह रेक्टल आर्टी है ये सुपर रेक्टल आर्टी जो एंटीरियल आयर दुटा है थ्री एंड सेवेन में गए पोस्टल जो गए दैट गोज इन द इलेवेन ओ क्लक पोइस अभी अरुण देर आर आर्टी इन द एनल कैनल एंड रेक्टल हो तर दिज आर द मेन ब्रांचेस विच सप्लाइज द रेक्टम एंड एनल कैनल ओके एनल कैनल में तीन टाइम भाग बना हो तर अपर पार्ट इज अलवेज सप्लाइड बाई दर आर्टरीज फ्रम द ब्रांचेस अफ इंटरनल इलेक्ट आर्टरी आने सकता अगर तर मेन ब्रांचेस ये जो हो That is the superficial artery. That's they supply uh, uh, the the what they call uh, the rectum and anus. Okay. The venous drainage and tissue are drained by the nerve. Okay. So these arteries, the junction, your arteries and your vein or junction, so they are the one who makes the cushion that you have to remember. Okay. This is your inferior artery. Sorry. This is your सुपरेक्टल आर्टरी इन्फोरेक्टल आर्टरी तल होके एनीवे सो दिज आर द ब्लड सप्लाई एंड वेनस सप्लाई अफ वोट यू कोल द रेक्टो एनल एरिया सो यू रिमेम्बर दिस ओके अगर मैं भाई तब देर आर डिफ्रेंट टाइप्स अफ हेमोराइज इंटरनल एबव द डेन्टेड लाइन कवर्ड बाय द म्यूकस मेम्ब्रेन अगर मैं देखा थे एक्सटर्नल भाई बिलो द डेन्टेड लाइन कवर्ड बाय द स्किन इफ इज जस्ट सी अगेन यहाँ से इफ यू सी हेयर दिस म्यूकस मेम्ब्रेन है म्यूकस मेम्ब्रेन कवर कर सब सब म्यूकोज लेयर आएर से भेसल आई रहें जमे सीरोज लेयर आएर लेयर बनाई रह दिस इज मसल लेयर है ते पे के दिस मेक क्वेश्चन है यहाँ के देर स्किन इज हेयर ओके भेसल्स इन को ब्रांचेस हो ट्रिब्यूटरीज हो तर कि यहाँ स्किन ने कवर कर या म्यूकोस मेम्बर ने कवर कर स्किन ने कवर कर द इंपोर्टेन्स आई कम वेन यू टॉक टू द टाइप्स अफ दर्नी ओके जस्ट रिमेम्बर दैट दिस इज डेन्टेड लाइन रिपीटेड लाइन टेलिंग दिस इज डेन्टेड लाइन दिस इज एनोरेक्टल जंक्शन ओके डेन्टेड लाइन में एनोडोमिकल जंक्शन हो डेन्टेड लाइन को बड़ा इंपोर्टेन्स है एनोडोमिकली जस्ट गो टू डू एनोडो बुक जहाँ बड़ा एनोडोक इंटरनल एब द डेन्टेड लाइन कवर्ड बाय द म्यूकस मेम्ब्रेन तेसन भैया एक्सटर्नल में क्वेश्चन होता भर यूजली दैट्स डाइरेक्टली बिलो द स्किन एंड द एक्सटर्नल इंटरनल स्पिंग बीच में होता है तेज क्वेश्चन होते हैं 
बट त्यहाँ प्रेसर पर्न सकता जिस प्रलैप्स होगा सो दे दे प्रेजेंट एज ए बल्ज अफ वेसल्स है एक्चुअली तो हिमोराइड में के होता तो व्हाट इज दैट इट्स नथिंग सी जस्ट दिस तानीर के पकेट बना दैट मेक इट ए बैग लाइक थिंग ऑन दैट बैग इन दैट बैग दैट द वेसल हेज कम डाउन वेन्स एंड आर्ट्रीज स्पेशली वेन्स आर कम डाउन ओके सो दे लाइक द पाउच दिस पाउच यहाँ पर जस्ट यू जो नर्मली वेन इज स्ट्रेच आउट मेक स्म पाउच ओके तर दिज आर यूजली स्मल एंड दिस कैन बी एनी बिग सो डिफ्रेंट साइज होके सो एटा तो क्लासिफिकेशन वाइज के टाइप इंटरनल और एक्सटर्नल होने भाई में कस इंटरनल भी होता कस एक्सटर्नल होता और वहाँ इंडिविजुअली अलग अलग होता जैसे प्राइमेरी वन एंड सेकेंडरी वन ओके अब यह डेफ यह प्राइमेरी और सेकेंडरी में अलग कन्फ्यूज ना क्योंकि प्राइमेरी वन दज इज अलवेज इन द एनोरेक्टल जंक्शन दैट यू अंडरस्टैंड दैट है ओके अब थ्री क्यों जहाँ भेसल्स आँच एंटीरियर रेक्टल आर्टरी पोस्टर रेक्टल आर्टरी जो आँच सुपर रेक्टल आर्टरी को ब्रांचेस तिन्द एंटीरियर ने थ्री और सेवेन में बनाए थ्री एंड सेवेन में और पोस्ट ने एलिमेन में बनाए सो जहाँ भेसल्स है तैं भेन भी होने तो यदि तो एरिया में थ्री सेवेन इलेवन ओ क्लक रिमेम्बर थ्री सेवेन इलेवेन इज वेरी वाइज टू अंडरस्टैंड थ्री सेवेन इलेवेन में छि रेक्टल कज ने भाई That is known as primary. Okay. Our raw secondary, okay. Secondary one of them is about there are vessels in between three, seven, or eleven o'clock. Which means vessels are. Why do you think you said you treat the primary hemorrhoids three, seven, eleven o'clock? Or there are there are there are vessels in there. Only for that, why? The vessels there are no vessels in three, seven o'clock once you operate there. So there might be again hemorrhoids between the these. आर्टरी थ्री सेवेन इलेवन बीच में अर्क आर्टरी तेज कैन हेव ए सेकेंडरी वॉट यू कॉल हिमोराइज ओके प्राइमरी हिमोराइज थ्री सेवेन ओ क्लक में भो सेकेंडरी प्राइमरी क्योर कर सके ट्रीट कर सके यदि इसको बीच बीच आने तेल सेकेंडरी भाषा तो एटा प्राइमरी कज इज लोकल कज सेकेंडरी इज सीस्टमेटिक कज टोटल हेपेंटेजन भोन What happens is that there are so many places where they get lot of um, uh, uh, systemic uh, uh, anastomosis, such as you know, say around the uh, umbilicus rectal region, ma, yeah, in the liver region, bare of the liver, ma, when you know, because such a superior inferior group of vessels they unite together and they make the what you call a sort of um, prominent vessels. That I am saying. कैपेट मेडिस भोटल हाइपर टेन्सन होने जी हो जैसे सो वन अफ द कज अफ हिमोरइड्स बिकज अफ द इंक्रीज प्रेसर में पोटल प्रेसर भाई के रेक्टल वेसल में प्रोमिनेंट बढ़े प्रेसर बढ़े तैंपन पाइस आने सकता सो दे आर नोन एज यूजली सेकेंडरी टू पोटल हाइपर टेन्सन प्राइमेरी प्राइमेरी हिमोरइड्स थ्री ओ थ्री एंड सेवेन एंड इलेवेन ओ क्लक में भाग भेस को बीच में आए सेकेंडरी पाइल्स सेकेंडरी हिमोराइट में या यदि पोटल हाइपोटेन्स ने अरुण कई कारण इंक्रीज प्रेसर भेसन भेनस में इंक्रीज प्रेसर भर आयो देन देर इज सेकेंडरी टू पोटल हाइपोटेन्सन और एनी अदर कंडीशन ओके सेकेंडरी अलग कन्फ्यूज न और देर माइड यू अदर कजेज लाइक एक्सटर्नल कजेज इन एनल स्पेशली इन एक्सटर्नल हिमोराइट में अरुण कारण भी होता सो दिज आर द टाइप्स अफ हिमोराइट सो मोस्ट कमनली यू हेव टू अंडरस्टैंड इंटरनल एक्सटर्नल and primary or secondary to some disease that is very important to understand okay that's type of hemorrhoids if you see this one 7311 ma you will see the this uh, what you called uh, hemorrhoids okay about you can you can see that there are so many hemorrhoids okay so this must be in 11 this must be 7 and this must be 3 o'clock okay अब के होता इन बिटवीन यू कैन सी दिमोराइड्स कमिंग अप सो दिज आर नोन एज सेकेंडरी हिमोराइड्स जिस थ्री सेवेन इलेवेन भाई यू दिस माइट बी वन यू सी दिस इज इलेवेन दिस इज एट सेवेन एंड दिस इज थ्री ओ क्लक पोजिशन सो दिस वन इज इन बिट्विन 
So there might be a secondary, secondary hemorrhoid. This might be a secondary hemorrhoid. But this one you can see, not in the anal margin. So this might be the external hemorrhoids. Okay. So these are all internal hemorrhoids. And this might be because the skin is almost added with that. So they, this might be your, uh, what you call external hemorrhoids. You can see here that they're not skin involved. Even this is, these are pulled this mucous membrane. But here you can see, Completely, the skin has come along with the, in, in the outer border of the hemorrhoids. So this is external hemorrhoids. This is internal at three, seven o'clock. This is eleven o'clock, and this three o'clock, and this is secondary hemorrhoids in between the two main hemorrhoids or primary hemorrhoids. So this give you a picture. Sir. You can see varieties of pictures. So this might give you some idea and clear idea where how to how to differentiate primary, secondary, or external or internal. Okay. I said that already. So uh, the primary are always due to the uh, vascular, vascular congestion locally and secondary in between three, seven o'clock position so, or 11 o'clock position. So these are known as the uh, secondary hemorrhoids. And the most important uh, classification one has to understand is this, the degree of hemorrhoids. First, second, third, and fourth, okay? The first degree one is a bleeding hemorrhoids, but you don't, you don't prolapse, okay? Or sometimes it, there is no bleeding, but accidentally when you examine the rectum or anorectal region, or you do a proctoscope, then you can see there's a bulge of bluish bulging, but there's no bleeding. Okay, they might bleed or they might not bleed. Okay, so so one can diagnose hemorrhoids if there's no bleeding. Usually they bleed, but accidentally they may not bleed. Okay, so that depends upon the degree of the hemorrhoids, whether they will present as a bleeding or as a as a uh, what you call a, a bulging from the anal canal. Okay, so first degree there is may not there is usually no bleeding, and there might bulge inside the anorectal area. They don't come out. Okay, that's the biggest thing. Okay, there are many many times there is bleeding, but they don't prolapse. Okay, even in first degree. So when you examine uh, by proctoscope, if you see there is a bulge, just a small bulge that's not coming out from the anal canal, they might bleed or they might not bleed. That's the first degree. It means the important thing is that if the swelling, the bulge comes out from the anal canal, it is not a first degree. If it doesn't come out, that is the first degree. Whether it's bleeding or not. So the swelling in order to it doesn't come out. You stay inside the anal canal is the first degree. And the one which comes out on the anal canal, whether it's bleed or not, that's a different story. Okay, there are two components, bleeding as well as prolapse. Okay, second degree, the bleeding hemorrhoids, which prolapse on straining and goes back inside its one. That means if the bulge comes out and goes by itself, you don't have to manipulate whether it's bleeding or not bleeding. They are second degree, okay. And the third degree hemorrhoids, they might bleed. Sometimes they are not bleed, but when they come out, they don't go by itself. You have to manipulate. You have to push easily and push it back. So the most important thing in hemorrhoids, in classification for degree wise, if the bulge comes out or not, that is very important. If it comes out. It's not a first degree. It doesn't come out, it's a first degree, whether it's a bleed or not bleed. Okay. If it comes out and goes by itself, whether it does it bleed or doesn't bleed, it's a second degree. And third degree one, it comes out and it doesn't go back by itself. You have to push it or manipulate it, whether it is bleed or doesn't bleed. That's the third degree. And the fourth degree one, hemorrhage that prolapse, the wonder that comes out of the anal canal. Okay. And you try to push it back again, but it doesn't go inside. It comes out again. Okay, that's in the fourth degree. Whether it bleed or doesn't bleed. Okay. Bleeding is an option. Bleeding is not a point of the degree of what you call hemorrhoids. It's a prolapse. Whether it comes out from anal canal, or it comes out anal canal and goes back itself, or you have to manipulate, or even you manipulate doesn't go back. So that, on that point, it depends upon what is the first degree, second degree, third degree, fourth degree. Bleeding is not the main concern. Bleeding is not the point of 
classification or the criteria of classification is a is a prolapse coming out or not is the basis of classification. If it doesn't come out, whether it's bleed or not, might be first degree, it's come out, it goes by itself without manipulation, that's second degree. When you have to manipulate, whether it's bleed or not, it is third degree. If you manipulate even with all the respect, but doesn't go back, it comes out all the time, that's the degree four. So this classification is very important on the in the part of what you call especially diagnosis and treatment of hemorrhoids. There are different modalities of treatment depending on the degree of the hemorrhoids. Okay. Now the same diagram you can see the first degree, grade one also they said this is degree first or stage one, whatever you say. Protrude into the inner canal but doesn't prolapse, you see. Within the canal, they stay back. Grade two, prolapse but reduce spontaneity. It goes by itself. Grade three, prolapse and requires manual man reduction. You have to manipulate. And grade four, irreducible. You can't reduce, or if you reduce it, it doesn't get reduced. So there is no any mention of bleeding. So in all this grade or in all these uh, stages or in this degree, you see, there might be bleed or there might not be bleed. The criteria of the grade or classification is is a is a is a protrusion of the swelling outside, inside, or this man it goes by itself, or you have to manipulate or doesn't go out. You have to manipulate. You have to push it and go in. And hemorrhoids that cannot be pushed back to manually anymore. So this one is, you can't push it because it's so big enough, it can't push it. If you push it even, it comes out. So these are the three, four grade or uh, stages or degree of hemorrhoids. And for every degree or grade or stage, whatever it is, the, the treatment is different. Okay. The why this hemorrhage takes place, just there are some hypotheses or some uh, known cause, but it's still is very difficult to say because they say somebody says it's a familial. Bawalasa, Bajalasa, Amalasa, Bajalasa, Telmalaban, that might be one cause, yes. That might be some uh, genetic, uh, not proved, but that might usually they run in the very statically. So usually it's when the rectal vein they congested, okay? Then what happens, the artery supply is there, the drainage system is obstructed, so that part of that uh, the cushion where the artery venous are um, uh, having from the what you call the capillaries, they get congested and they don't drain and they start what you call getting bigger. Okay. Sometimes there is no veins in the rectal vein in the in the um, rectal or suprarectal veins, all these places in mesenteric veins. Okay. Then the column of blood, when somebody stands, the column of blood will press, the weight of the column of blood press the cushion area, okay? That's weight of the blood in the column. And when the vein goes to the muscle, when they have to go to outside to get drained in the higher level of um, veins or artery, so when they go through the muscles, when the muscle contract, the pressure inside that lower part of that uh, uh, veins, they increases. You see, when they contract, they press the vein and the blood can flow back up. So the column of blood that is in, within uh, uh, the distal to the muscle contraction will increase the pressure of the vein and that goes the pressure over the cushion. So that might be one of the cause of what you call the increased pressure and the prolapse of the, what you call, uh, And when somebody increases intraabdominal pressures and contracts abdominal pressure and press the rectum and the anal canal, so during 
defecation when somebody has a very constipation or when you are forcing to pass the stool. So increased pressure of what you call, call the directum, they might also cause pressure over the cushions. Okay, so that might also cause to drag the mucosa and the vessels down. Even in constipation or diarrhea, and during during pregnancy also, you know, intraabdominal pressure increases when somebody uh, the, when the pregnant lady try to pass the urine um, uh, pass the stool, they have to strain, increase the pressure. So on that cases, the cushions might get pressed right, and they might prolapse. Okay, sometimes in shear rectum also. The frequency of increased pressure in the rectum and the frequency of the stool or sometimes the bleed, they might cause pressure over the, uh, the same cushion. As I said, there's increased portal vein pressure. So portal vein has a direct effect over the mesenteric, uh, supramesenteric vein and the rectal veins. Then the whole column, because there is increased pressure in the portal vein, so drainage system from the below is uh, restricted. So the column and the pressure over the portal, uh, the rectal vein will be increasing. So that might be the only cause of vein. This is very important to understand because you are treating as a local cause, as a hemorrhoids, but there is systematic cause of increased portal veins. Then what happens? Then you will have problem that uh, 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 that you are treating the local cause, but systemic problem, uh, disease there. So the, again, uh, the local cause is treated, but again, they develop what you call the uh, uh, um, Hemorrhoids, okay, because of increased pressure, portal hypertension. As I said, in the, uh, pregnancy and ascites, there is increased abnormal pressure that also pressurizes the anal cushions and make it prolapse. So, as I said, there, when there is strain, raise the luminal pressure, as in the in, in, in erectile canal. So, this might cause what you call uh, pressure over the artery, pressure over the vein. And there was a pressure over the ampullary pulp of the rectum. Okay, as I said, there's a narrowing area. So, or raised portal and systemic venous pressure also cause all this uh, bulging of the hemorrhoid plexus because of the increased pressure, intraluminal arterial pressure or rect over the rectal ampullary pulp or systemic or portal pressure that might cause the vessels to have a increased pressure and 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 um, uh, hitting the cushion of the rectum and they cause what you call the, the hemorrhoids. Oh, there is one theory. Arterial pressure, what is it? Arterial pressure transmission, what is it? When there is a pressure increased, okay, of different region, you know, of a muscle contraction, yeah, increased uh, abnormal pressure, if there is a pressure increases in the artery, that is transmitted in the rectal artery. You know, the rectal artery transmitted with it, that pressure will press increased pressure over the cushion. That when obstruction drain over the column of that pressure increases over the anal cushion. The same thing when the arterial pressure is increased, abdominal pressure levels, yeah, contraction, yeah, hypertension levels, whatever it is, when the pressure increases, so it will directly hit the cushion because of the arterial pressure over the lower part, depending part of the heat guards. Okay? So that is the transmission of the arterial pressure. It's not the wall of the artery is important, it's the pressure of the construction, uh, contraction of the vessels, and increased pressure of the blood pressure is increased, that presses the cushion. That's what it is known as transmission of the arterial pressure. Okay. Now, sliding theory. Sliding theory is based on the prolapse. So when the mucous membrane, when you strain too much, the first thing that affect the pressure uh, of your stool will hit the mucous membrane. So along with your stool, this mucous membrane already is stressed down. Okay. So resumption that suspensory tissue, that is what the mucous membrane is suspended, they get lax because of pressure, they drag the mucous membrane and they make a sort of lax mucous membrane and on that lax membrane they form like a pouch and on that pouch these vessels come down okay so this is known as sliding lining theory because the stool when it when 
increased pressure to expel the stool, it drags the mucous membrane. Okay, when it drags the mucous membrane, then the mucous membrane come down, they stretch out, they make make a pouch like things, and the in the pouch the vessels easily come down. So that's one theory there. Okay, and raised basal and pressure causes you know basal cause raised uh, basal and pressure causes means uh, the pressure over the artery. Okay, and uh, yeah, normal pressure of uh, the rectum it increases. Okay, so in that case also that might cause uh, the dragging of the mucous membrane. So constriction effect of superhumeral veins leading to congestion of humeral artery plexus. As I told you, the congestion might also cause increased pressure in the humeral artery. Okay, so if you see in this picture, if you if you see in this picture, this mucous membrane, this mucous membrane, when they hit by stool, they might drag down. Okay, they drag down and become. Always in tight compartments, so they easily get the easy way, but they lose the space and they start develop over there. So that might be the sliding theory. This mucous membrane slides, but in the hemorrhoidal theory, in the vascular theory, when there are conditions of the uh, this rectal vein up, so whole column of the vessels they hit the into the place in the cushion, and that might drag, that might what you call. Uh, Make a swelling over there and stretch the mucous membrane and make this uh, what we call uh, uh, the pouch like and it's like it comes out as a hemorrhoids. Now, what happens, you see, if it's still they have got uh, what we call uh, piles or hemorrhoids, a pouch like things, protrusion or whatever it is, once it still comes down, if the heart is still there, this mucous membrane might be lacerated by the heart stool. Increased pressure in the rectum to expel out the stool. Very hard is okay, and this might get ruptured or lacerated, and the veins opens and they start bleeding. The cause of bleeding is most probably is a rupture of the mucous membrane or lacerated or hard stool, and they get, or sometimes even lose stool once there is thin out stool. Uh, I mean mucous membrane, and the stool are loose even, but because of the pressure. That loose stool might even damage the mucous membrane, and they might get bleed. So, cause of bleeding is is the damage to the or lacerate to the mucous membrane of the rectum or anal canal, and expose the vessels, and they bleed. So, that's the main cause of what you call the bleeding of the uh, in the uh, in the uh, hemorrhoids. Perhaps you don't know the cause why this happens. So, there are very many theories. Okay. Of uh, causing of hemorrhoids nowadays, because on that theory also, on that assumption also, a lot of treatment is instituted. Okay, as they said, infections, erosion of the walls of veins, repeated infection of inner lining, secondary trauma during defecations, that might cause what you call infection causes of uh, uh, what you call uh, causing of hemorrhoids. You know, if there are infections, okay, erosion of the walls of the veins or the trauma during defecations that might also cause hemorrhoids. Okay. Diet and is to consistency, bowel diet, not regular bowel habit, irregular bowel habit, and there is very hard stool there. Diet, if you take that makes you soft, uh, what you call uh, moist and regular good diet, high fiber diet. So you don't have a constipation, so hard stool, which might cause the problem the what you interrupt pressure and cause the Okay, these are all these are all hypotheses. Um, uh, I think it will. Uh,
The, the NL cushion is uh, lacks in NL cushion. And uh, the sharing force action on NS, displace of cushions and mucosal trauma when there is trauma, okay, like instrumentation or maybe surgery, the, the, the damage, uh, repeated proctoscope, repeated proctoscope, uh, what you call um, um, delivery, that might cause also what you call uh, weakness of the and displacement of cushions. And once the elasticity of cushion, especially the, the, the fibrous tissue or um, collagen tissue are less in old age and in immunocompromised patient or repeated pregnancy. In those cases, what happens? The suspensory action would hold that uh, mucous membrane and the vessels, they get loose. They can't retract it up, then they will have a prolapse. Okay, these are some of the pathophysiology, pathophysiology uh, behind the hemorrhoids. So, with all these features of what you call pathophysiology and etiology, etiology of uh, of the hemorrhoids, how they present, okay. As I said, it's the most common in four to four five four percent in all the population. Especially, they are more common in those places where they have got uh, loose cushions uh, and hard um, uh, bowel, um, hard still and bowel, which is not regular. Especially in Eastern countries, you know, they don't go for toilet or pass uh, stool every day like we do, okay? So they have got a lot of problem of constipation. They go for even, they're happy to have a bowel movement once a week even. So in those cases, there is a lot of constipations, you know? So increased pressure in the abdomen, in the erectile, um, anal, uh, erectile anal area. So they get de developed in what is very, very common in the increased pregnancy, you see? That's very common. So. These are the conditions where they develop mostly in Western country. They are uh, almost 4.4 of the population, they have got hemorrhoids. And equally in both the sexes, mostly the age ranges from 30 to 45. You won't see uh, hemorrhoids in younger age, okay? Because their muscle tone, their uh, cushions are very strong enough. But once they get older, multiple pregnancies, then they start having what you call this piles. And there is always, if there is bleeding, the bleeding will always be fresh and red. And they might come along with the defecations or they might come after defecation, not before the defecation, not before the stool comes out. Usually there, if their blood comes out before the stool, that's because of, and it's painful, it's probably it's a fissure, okay? But in, in piles, usually when the stool comes down, they lacerate the mucous membrane and the blood might be streaked along the stool like a uh, uh, toothpaste, uh, what, what toothpaste is that, prudent or something like that. They have got the color white and the red color, they comes like that, okay? If it is a pile or there is a splash of blood after the last, of, after passing the stool. Once they lacerate the mucous membrane, the bleed there, Either they come as a streak along the stool or there will be fresh blood splash in the pan. And they get worried, you know, just even, even one ml of blood uh, coming out in the, uh, in the uh, piles, they think when they sp spread out in the pan or, or in the uh, uh, commode, they think, oh, it's such a huge blood come out. Usually they are not. Yes, chronic bleeding, long standing hemorrhoids, they might cause problem of anemia or blood loss, but one or two doesn't make difference. Okay? So that's what they come with the fresh blood, okay? fresh blood. There are other causes of fresh blood, especially when there is a fissure, when there is what we call carcinoma rectum or the anal, uh, anomalies of the vessels, that's different. But if it is fresh blood, it's spice, not what you call melina the bleeding from uh, above, okay, a proximal GI tract. That's, that's how to differentiate, okay. Only you have to differentiate from what you call the fissure and the carcinoma rectum, or might be sometimes what you call massive bleeding from the lower uh,
colon area. And usually this bleeding, if there is continuous bleeding, you have a strain on the garments. And usually they are paleless. Usually they are paleless. The bleeding is paleless. So paleless, fresh bleeding during defecations. Always think of hemorrhoids. And when you see them, you can see a soft mass coming out as I showed you. And that depends on degree, how much is that, whether it's a, within the uh, anal can canal or it is just come out and goes back or where it is, you have to push it or where it doesn't go back even if you push it. So that degree of depend one you have to examine. There are a lot of discharge because of the congestion. So this discharge might be itching to the anal canal or perianal area. And in long standing, as I told you, small amount of blood passing, but he didn't bother much. Then it's a long standing. You will see what you call uh, anemia. And sometimes these prolapsed piles, because of the obstruction, they can't go back. They get obstructed or strangulated in the anal canal. So they get thrombosed. And they might get what you call infections. And they are very painful sometimes. They're very painful. You have to do emergency operation, excite the whole thrombosed spine sometimes. So prolapse is spasm of pain. Prolapses, they're there. And infection might be there. The thrombose there might be very painful. So there are the simple clinical uh, presentation. They might you can face it uh, in, in MRIs. About there might be different regions. There might be different other features uh, secondary to uh, uh, in secondary uh, what you call uh, MRIs. Even in primary also, you'll find other causes constipations or um, cough or prostate enlargement, all sort of things they might find it in these patients. And occupation is very important. Those people who stand for a long time, like teachers, like the porters, carrying the heavy load, heavy worker, okay, and uh, dehydrations, you know, places, you might get uh, more. Uh, the, so the hemorrhage is also very much related to the job or, or the occupation of the patient. That's very important, okay? And as I said, when you examine them, you can see the bulge, prolapse of hemorrhage along the, with the skin and mucus cover. They are soft, pinkish looking, globular, and very positioned, as I told you. When you do PR, if not prolapse, you need to PR, you won't feel anything. Because they are so soft, you won't be differentiated um, uh, whether the swelling or not. If the swelling is thrombosed or there is a polyp or any growth, then only you will be appreciated. Otherwise, if you do PR, it is very difficult, very, very difficult or impossible to diagnose hemorrhoids. Okay? So that's very important. So PR is not the diagnostic uh, examinations. For that, you have to go for what you call uh, proctoscopy or sigmatoscopy, whatever you have got. So proctoscopy is the one that's the best diagnostic tool or method of investigations. You can see the bulging out of the prolapse uh, mucous membrane and piles inside the proctoscope. Like in this case, you can see that this proctoscope, this is the proctoscope, and this is the pile. So they bulge out inside the proctoscope. If very big, it doesn't come out all, but very small one, or all three can see. But you can see from uh, this end that different swellings over there, okay? And you can see the bleeding sometimes. You can see the mass, and you see the number, size, site, was it bleeding or not? And you can see, when you examine, you can see in, in, in pathology there or not, like any poor. If you're not very convinced, the, the cause of bleeding or, or the swelling, you might go for a sigmoscopy or even colonoscopy to see if there is hemorrhoids or any pathology beyond the hemorrhoids, so even proximally. That's very important. As I said, you have to go for a sigmoscopy, you know, and um, this is what the scope they have seen. The scope has gone beyond the uh, anal canal, so you can see the external hemorrhoids. This one is internal hemorrhoids. This is a scope. This is a, uh, this is a colonoscope. Uh, this colonoscope, and you can see the points. Okay, you can see the points here. So these are the uh, and colonoscopy, scleroscopy is very important.
to diagnose if there is other than hemorrhoids. Okay. So just you can see the basic blood pictures. You can see if there is any high ESR abdominal or pelvis, what you call uh, ultrasounds or barium meal follow through. If you can see that if there is any pathology in the lower colon or in the intestinal tract. Okay. And you have to differentiate hemorrhoids with rectal polyp or mild carcinoma rectum. As I said, the fissure you know, fissure line, you know, portal hypertension, rectal prolapse. Okay. Rectal prolapse is very important uh, differential diagnosis in rectal prolapse. Whole circumference of the rectum they prolapse out, whereas in piles it comes up swellings. You know, that's how we have to differentiate ulcerative colitis sometimes because the bleeding, diabetic colitis. Or anaerobic colitis, intersection, or might be ventric uh, vascular anomalies. I told you all these things. The, all, these are all the causes of pain and what you call the bleeding. Okay, whereas polyps or uh, rectal prolapse, these are all the cause of prolapse, uh, sliding of the uh, what you call hemorrhoids. Rest might be there are a lot of bleeding conditions we have to differentiate from the hemorrhoids. Okay. Complications, profuse bleeding, chronic bleeding, cause anemia. Sometimes the, the hemorrhoid they strangulate because of the tight anal canal uh, or might be fibrosis. So it's very painful because of thrombosis. Thrombosis spice is very, very painful. It's, it's prolapsed and it's a hard swelling. You can't touch it. Very painful. You can defecate. It's so painful. Sometimes they're gangrenous, ulcerative of fibrosis. They form abscess. And when they access from their fibrosis, the anal canal might be stenosis. So it, it, the opening of the anal canal is what you call the is small and very difficult to pass the still. And sometimes the retrograde infection might cause portal pyemia because it's a tributary of the portal vein. So it might cause portal pyemia. So these are the complications. And treatment, depending, as I told you, depending upon the uh, degree of the hemorrhoids, first degree, nothing much to do. If there is no bleeding, just ask the patient to have a normal diet, not spicy, no irritating diet, just a lot of fiber uh, rich diets and uh, water that will be, and try to find if it is, there is any cause other than local cause for the hemorrhoids. That's very important. And diet, as I told you, fiber rich, low or no animal products, plenty of fruits, fruits and vegetables. If we have got uh, hemorrhoids, then you have to seize bath. Seize bath means once you uh, pass the stool in the morning or evening water twice or three days, you just put the lukewarm water in a tub and sit down on the uh, deep all your back portions uh, along with the anal uh, opening. And you just take open the anal opening close by itself so that steam might go inside and soothe that area of anorectal junctions. And you can use some some sort of uh, ointment liquid, some hydrocortisone, um, low hydrocortisone type of, so it, it might fibrose the mucous membrane and cause uh, what you call uh, fibrosis and stop bleeding. So if you are when constipated, then you can take a natural or some sort of laxative so that you will have regular bowel and there is no increased pressure, no constipations. So this is what you conservative treatment. It might go for a long time. Okay, and uh, surgically, because somebody says that, as I told you, there is a spasm of the rectal muscles or anal muscles that might cause constriction of the vessels, so cause uh, the, vessel, the increased pressure in the uh, artery as well as uh, they compromising in the drainage of the vein, uh, rectal vein, so increased pressure in the cushion area. So in those cases, you can just uh, under under the local anesthesia or the short general anesthesia, lubricate your anal canal and stretch the muscles in such a way that uh, the muscle gets stretched and the entrapment of vessels they might get released. So you have to do every week for a long time till that um, hemorrhoids disappears. In first degree, uh, especially in children, you might do it stretching, but it's very important if you do overdo it and stretch too much and damage the external or internal muscle, then they will have a problem of incontinence. So if you understand, do gradually. That's one of the uh, things that we've done in the past. Or you can 
uh, inject sclerotherapy, 5% phenol with olive oil, 1 to 2 ml in each hemorrhoids. In the base, not on the mucous membrane, on the base of the hemorrhoids, you just inject it. And there might be just some bleeding also, but just pack it with um, gauze pieces, leave it there after soak with uh, dry lichen, and you do it every week. And you will see if it is effective, you can see that there is no bleeding first. And secondly, they start shrinking because of the fibrosis of the sclerotherapy, phenol and olive oil. It starts shrinking and get shrink and get fibrous, and there will be no bleeding from them. There might be some small swelling, but they are firm enough and they get fibrous and they're not bleeding. So even in acute cases of bleeding, somebody comes to profuse bleeding by um, what you call uh, hemorrhoids. In those cases also, before you do a definitive surgery, you just clean it and sclerotherapy, push the phenol and phenol compressed by gauze piece for an hour or two, gradually the bleeding stops, okay? Sometimes the band ligations, you just push a band beyond on the neck of that um, piles, base of the piles, and it will occlude the veins or artery coming in the piles and they get, gradually they get fibrous. Cryotherapy is the same. This is what you call uh, minus I mean, 30 degrees or something like that. You just apply on the uh, fundus of the piles, hemorrhoids, it gets shrink. Laser therapy all the same. Or digital guidance hemorrhoid artery therapy means there are some special instruments you pass in the uh, endorectal junction and they detect out the arterial, uh, artery of the uh, of 37 area and just, just ligate them. So when there is no blood supply, automatically they will shrink down. So that's one of the way, but it's very difficult. You need a lot of expertise. So the first degree, you don't have to do much. Second degree also, if it's not surgical treatment, but really right surgical treatment. Or sometimes the fibrous piles or thrombus piles, or there are both internal and external piles. The external and internal piles, they have got connected each other, then it's become very big enough. So in those cases, only you need indicated for surgery. The uh, surgery, there are two methods that's most commonly used to done before. They open and close. Uh, I think we'll talk it when you talk about the uh, procedures. Then the, the, the staple hemorrhoidotomy, that uh, they apply staple all around that mucus, submucous layer of uh, enorectal junction, okay? And they cut it and take out all that tissue uh, of enorectal junction with almost one to two centimeter of the mucous membrane uh, along with that. So it is the what you call uh, uh, a sort of uh, correction of the prolapse, the prolapse theory as, or the sliding theory, because there is mucous membrane has prolapsed down. So you just staple them and make it cut that extra mucous membrane along with the blood vessel inside, and they will staple around. So it it serves two purposes. One is the prolapse mucous membrane along with the vessels are already removed, as well as at the same time the hemorrhoids also are removed by double layer stapler, uh, circular stapler hemorrhoid. That's a new technique. And I don't think you know, should know TSO, that is transanal hemorrhoid or hemorrhoid artery ligations, as I said um, uh, before. So these are the surgical treatment, you have to do it. But there is always pain because it reflects retention of urine. And there might sometimes, when you tie it, there might be the extra hemorrhage or secondary hemorrhage because of infections. If you do all that big, big uh, hemorrhoids at a single uh, sitting, so they might structure, the anal canal might be narrower, there is structure. That's usually they said if there are big hemorrhoids, if you are going to open one, then you have to do one or two at a time, not all the three at a time, or all that sister. Um, hemorrhoids, okay? And uh, they might develop anal fissure or abscess. As I said, if you don't do properly, if you damage the internal ring, internal uh, ring, uh, anal ring, 
then you might uh, land in an incontinence. In, in, in That's a dreadful complications. So all that is uh, what you call uh, of hemorrhoids. And you go through the books. I think the book is very good for hemorrhoid. is definitely barely a love. And you can go even SRP, new book. Uh, they have covered a lot of things, um, as I told you. But I think you must first go understand the energy first and then belly love. That's very good book for hemorrhoids. Okay. Thank you very much.